feeling so close And now I'm gonna take a trail in the world But I gon' love you Yeah, I'm gonna love you I'll give you the world of what I've got The fancy finds, baby, I have not It's gonna love you Hello beautiful people! Kumusta? Welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Ems and I am going to share with you guys my home cooking simple recipes. I know that to most people, cooking is one of the most tiring jobs because of the hard work in the kitchen. From grocery shopping or maybe dressing a chicken, cleaning the fish or shellfish, and of course, cleaning the dishes. But for me, this is one of the most rewarding jobs, seeing my husband, family and friends happily eating of what I have prepared and cooked for them. Well, enough for that. To those who have not subscribed yet to my channel, please, please click the subscribe button below, hit like and bell notification so that you will be updated for our next episodes. And today, we are going to make chicken and pork stock. Stock is actually a base for your soups, stews, and sauces. We will be combining chicken bones, pork bones, and aromatics to create a flavorful stock. Start sharpening your knife by adding water onto the surface of the wet stone to create a good slurry and keep the stone lubricated. Hold the knife at an angle of 15 to 20 degrees. Start from the heel of the knife and then slide down towards the tip of the knife with gentle pressure. Do the same on the other side of the blade until the edge is to your desired sharpness. Repeat the same process with a finer grit stone using less pressure on the blade until the edge is smooth of burns. Wet the kitchen towel and place under the cutting board to avoid from moving and also for safety reasons. Not so thick towel, you can use any small cloth and always put your cutting board on a flat surface. I have a whole chicken and I am going to show you how to cut this into pieces and take out the carcass or the chicken bones that we are going to use for stock. When I was young, I used to watch my mom cutting a whole chicken and she always starts by removing the chicken feet. Cut off the fats and then the head. Do not throw these parts because we are going to include the chicken feet and the head into our stock. Of course, we need to clean the feet by cutting off the nails. We are not going to throw this straight into the stock pot without cleaning. My mom used to say, those feet are so dirty. And we need to remove the beak. Remove also the butt and do not include this into the stock. Once you have cut off the feet and the head, you need to relax the chicken. Then, start to remove the leg by making a slit into the skin with your knife and find the joint, then cut right through it. Repeat the same process on the other side of the leg part. I am not going to cut this into two sections which is the thigh part and the drumstick because the leg part is not that big. The same goes with the wings. You need to find the joint and then cut. For the breast part, you need to be patient in cutting the meat. 
find the middle or the center bone and gently cut little by little right down to the rib cage by pulling out the meat. I know that cutting a whole chicken can be a hassle and probably a waste of time for some people. Well, it is cheaper to buy a whole chicken. You can use the chicken carcass for your stock making and you can also use the other parts of the chicken for other dishes. Of course, it is all up to your preference. Now left with the carcass or chicken bones and I am going to break this into pieces. If you have a kitchen scissors, you can actually use that in cutting and that would be easier. Anyway, I am using a knife here and exerted more effort in breaking these bones. Store this inside the freezer. Remember, when you buy plastic containers, make sure it is food grade. Since we have done cutting off the chicken, we need to prepare the aromatics or the vegetables. Start by peeling off the carrots and rough cut into pieces. Tip! When you're doing the preparation, it is recommended to use a waste bin or any container where you can dispose your trash and throw it right away once you're done. Rough cut the celery into pieces and if you don't have a celery or carrots, you can use ginger and spring onions, it is up to your liking. The same goes with the onions, peel off the skin and cut into 4 pieces. Then, the garlic, peel off the skin, you can crush this or use as a whole. Here are the aromatics. Onions, carrots, celery, garlic, bay leaves, and peppercorns. For our stock today, I am using chicken and pork bones. I also added the chicken wings to give more flavor. For pork bones, I used big bones. Prepare and wash your stock pot. First, we need to blanch the bones. Put in the pork and chicken bones into the stock pot and fill in and cover with water. Bring to boil and simmer for about 3 minutes and take out the scum or the impurities. The reason why we are blanching the bones first because we need to have a clear stock. Impurities can make our stock cloudy which we don't want that. Rinse the bones under running water and put back the bones into the stock pot. Add in all the aromatics, add water, just nice to cover all your ingredients inside the stock pot. Bring to boil and clean up your workstation. You can add some fresh herbs like parsley or thyme. While waiting to boil, wash your tray and chopping board. Once it is boiling, lower down the fire and let it simmer for about 2 to 3 hours. When the bubbles start floating, take out the scum or the impurities. From time to time, remove the scum out. Once your stock is ready, switch off the stove and transfer it to a container and let it cool down. How do we know when the stock is ready? Oh, 
you will know. For my case, I have the habit of tasting my stock from time to time, and normally the water will reduce to almost to half, and also when the bones start breaking. Strain your stock, then pack and store inside your freezer. You can store this for months and take out whenever you need it. Again, if you are using plastic containers, use the food grid type.